All right. Well, hi. Welcome to lesson three uh, in unit one. Unit one is all about basic function work. And so in lesson three, we're going to deal with composition along with other operations of functions. Because, see, if you've got a couple of functions, if you've got a couple of functions like maybe f of x is x squared and maybe g of x is maybe the sine of x, and I know we haven't talked much about trig functions yet, but you may be familiar with sine of x. If I have two functions, f of x and g of x, I can do some operations with those functions. I can talk about f plus g of x. And f plus g of x is exactly what it sounds like. It's x squared plus sine x. And I can talk about f minus g of x. And f minus g of x is exactly what it sounds like. And I can talk about f times g of x. f times g of x is exactly what it sounds like. And I can talk about f divided by g of x. And that is, no surprise, exactly what it sounds like. Now, quick thought here. The domain on the first three are easy. You just take whichever domains you're dealing with for f and g individually, and you intersect them. Any input that is legit for both f and g is legit for the sum or the difference or the product. So. In all of those cases, all real numbers are OK. Any real number can be substituted into x squared. Any real number can be substituted into sine x. We intersect those two sets. It is the same set. However, if you have a quotient, if you have a quotient, then you have to ensure that your denominator is not zero, is not in any way, shape, or form, not at all, cannot be zero. So I can't talk about the domain of that yet because we're still too early in the year, but it would be all of the real values of x for which that denominator is not zero. So. Plus, minus, times, divide, easy, easy, easy. That's not what we came to talk about. What we came to talk about was this. And this is red f of g of x. And all that means is I take the f function and I use as its input the g function. f of g is f of g of x. So in our case from the last slide, that would be taking the f function, and the f function is this one, and using as its input that one. So I have to square something. The thing I have to square is sine of x. I square the input. I square the input. Note. Actually, I'm going to throw in a side note here. Side note. La. The side note is that composition is not necessarily, rarely at all, commutative. Because when we do g of f of x, well, 
the G function takes the sign of the input. It takes the sign of whatever the input is. And so the input in this case is x squared. And so we have sine of x squared. When we do a composition, we use one function as an input into another function. So things you should know how to do. You should know that if f of x is, I don't know, the square root of x plus 2, and g of x is x squared plus 1, you should know what f of g of x is, what g of f of x is, what f of f of x is, and what g of g of x is. I will do a couple. You will do some when we get to class together. If I were to do fog of x, f of g of x, well, the f function takes the square root of an input plus 2. There's some input. That input has 2 added to it. And then you take a square root. In this case, the input is x squared plus 1. And so all together now, all together now, all together now, all together now. You got that. Similarly, I'll skip down to the bottom. I'll do GOG. GOG takes, it, it takes the G function. Now the G function squares an input and adds 1. It squares an input and adds 1. That's what the G function does. The input in the G function is the G function. We take the G function and input it into itself. And so that turns out to be some sort of ridiculousness. This is what? X to the fourth plus... 2x squared plus 1 plus another 1. The other two are things that I will leave for you to consider between now and the time we gather in class. Now, here's the thing with that. When we do compositions, compositions are assumed to exist everywhere that is legitimate for all values of x that we can. So if I'm looking at the input as the g function and the outermost function as the f function, the domain of the composition, we have to have x's that are legitimate here those x's are going to produce y values, those y values have to be okay there. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay? Okay. So, what do we mean? Uh, let's see. Let's see. How do I want to do this? I want to bring up a picture. I want to bring up a picture because let's just take a really, really simple example. Let's pretend that we take that function. We take that function. And this function would come about because f of x is radical x and g of x is x squared, so f of g of x is the square root of x squared. Now, you're thinking to yourself, I know what that is, I know what that is, that's x. Yeah, wonderful, except when you graph that thing, you don't get that. 
In fact, that's a mess. So, what went wrong? Well, see, here's the thing. This is only equal to that where the domains correspond. What ends up happening? I have an input from here, and all x's are good here. All x's are good here. But they produce y values. OK? And those y values have to become inputs there. So we have to make sure that the range from the input function is OK with the domain over there. The domain on the f function does not include 0 to infinity. I'm sorry, does not include negative numbers. It includes only from 0 to infinity. Does not include negative numbers. And so even though the calculator gives me this picture, I'll take a picture because it lasts longer. Even though the calculator gives me this picture, this part doesn't exist. The only part that exists is that part of the picture. Because the domain on the f function is positive x values. How am I doing? OK. We're all right. Neat. I will see you in class tomorrow. Looking forward to it.